Hey! <laughs> Y'all got this, Amy, like, I'm out of water. I've got a little bit in here. Hey, 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 guys. Okay, so I'm not going to say good morning because Avi, it's 8.30. <laughs> It is 8.32 actually, so I'm just a few minutes late, but I'm here and we're going to go through the book of Habakkuk. I mentioned this this morning in my EMJ Daily that I was going to read tonight, so um, that's what we're going to do, guys. <laughs> we're going to read. We're going to go through this. Um, I have, I love my Bible, guys, and I know I get asked this a lot. What Bible do you use? I use the Encourage. I don't know if you can see this. And I'm live on Instagram and Facebook. So, hello. Hello. But I have the Encourage Devotional Bible. It's a Christian Standard Version. Okay? So, I really like it. Not just because of all the devotions that are tucked in every book in here. It's really, really cool. But um, at the beginning of each book, it has like understanding the author's heart connecting with God's word, connecting with our story, and it kind of just gives you a little a little background here. So, I am going to read that, and then we're going to read through <laughs> the whole book of Habakkuk. Don't be afraid. Don't jump off. It's only three chapters long, but guys, this is so important. We have to do this because we are diving into this study, and it's so good, and I feel like it's so relevant for today. And, um, and everything that's happening in our world, right? And what we need is more of Jesus. What we need is more of his word, more of relationship with him. That is what we need. So, here we are. If you're watching me live, give me a hashtag one. If you're watching the replay, give me a hashtag two. <laughs> and here we go with EMJ Daily at night. Maybe it should be EMJ Nightly. I don't know. Anyways, not doing this every night. <laughs> but anyway, so here we go. The book of Habakkuk. Maybe you've never heard of it. Maybe this is your first time saying Habakkuk what? <laughs> it's Habakkuk. H-A-B-A-K-K-U-K. Okay? <laughs> Got it? <laughs> and it's in the Old Testament. It's tucked. It's towards the end of the Old Testament. And um, where Micah and Nahum. And then you've got Habakkuk. Excuse me, y'all. And then you've got Zephaniah, and these are all tiny little books, all kind of just put together. So, you might have to look in your table of um, contents. You might have to look at the beginning and find what page it is in your Bible, because a lot of times it just gets missed because, again, it's only three chapters long, okay? So, find it. Get there with me so we can go through this together. I know we all have different Bible versions. That's okay. <laughs> Completely fine. Here we go. So, understanding the book, understanding the author's heart. So, in my Bible, it says, written by the prophet Habakkuk. This book is unlike any other prophetic work. For Habakkuk directly addresses God and not the people. In a question and answer style, Habakkuk resembles the book of Job and makes similar inquiries. Where Job was concerned with the suffering of the innocent, Habakkuk is concerned about the prospering of the wicked. He's like, hello, God. Like, the wicked here look like they're, they're got the upper hand. What is happening, right? Both situations seem unjust. So, how can these realities be squared with a just and loving God? Habakkuk's questions is a sincere plea for understanding, and his conversation with God provides us with a deeper understanding of who God is and how we can relate to him. And then it has a section of connecting with God's story, and it says, in Habakkuk, we see a transformation. He opens with a series of questions, and God responds with the words that become the keynote of this book. The righteous one will live by his faith, which is chapter 2, verse 4, and we're going to read that in a minute. Faith. Our job is not to comprehend every detail of every matter. Let me say that again. Our job is not to comprehend every detail of every matter. Our job is to trust by faith that God is good 
and he is working according to his good plan, to his good plan, right? God does go on to assure Habakkuk that no wickedness will go unpunished, but the timing and the means of such punishment belong to the Lord. By book's end, Habakkuk says, though the fig tree does not bud and there is no fruit on the vines, I will celebrate in the Lord. I will rejoice in the God of my salvation. May we all endeavor to live with the same heart of trust. Okay, and then it has a part that says connecting with our story. The book of Habakkuk reads almost like a journal between a prophet and his God. We are privy to the private innermost thoughts of a good man who struggled to make sense of the world around him. In this way, we are invited to converse with God, to go to him with our questions, and to ask for his help in trusting him with our whole hearts. I don't know about you, but I've heard it said before, you know, don't question God. And it's not meant as in, yeah, you can ask God questions. We have a relationship with God, remember? We can talk to him and we can ask him questions. I think what that statement really means is don't doubt him. Don't question his authority, his power in who he is. Know who he, who he is, that he is God. His ways are higher than our ways, right? Um, his thoughts are higher than our thoughts. We are not God. So that saying, don't question God as in trust him, have faith in God, right? But not meaning that you can't actually ask him a question. You can do that. You can do that. Habakkuk does that. So here we go. We're diving in. Hey guys, I know a lot of you are jumping on here. Hey, hey, hey. So here we go with Habakkuk. All right. Oh, and this morning... This morning, I read this too, just so you know, when we come to Habakkuk, it is important for us to understand that the northern kingdom had already fallen nearly a century before, okay? And um, Habakkuk's prophecy here is looking ahead to the very similar destiny of the southern kingdom. So we have two different kingdoms here, God's people. The northern has already fallen, okay? And it's looking not so good, not so hot. For the southern kingdom. And then here we have Habakkuk. He is talking to God here. And he's questioning. Okay. So here it says. The, the Chapter 1. Verse 1 of Habakkuk. The pronouncement that the prophet Habakkuk saw. So we know that Habakkuk is a prophet. How long Lord must I call for help. And you do not listen. Or cry out to you about violence. And you do not save. Why do you force me to look at injustice? Why do you tolerate wrongdoing? Oppression and violence are right in front of me. Strife is ongoing and conflict escalates. This is why the law is ineffective and justice never emerges. For the wicked restrict the righteous. Therefore, justice comes out perverted. God's first answer here. Starting in verse 5. Look at the nations and observe. Be utterly astounded. For I am doing something in your days that you would not believe when you hear about it. Look, I am raising up the Chaldeans, that bitter, impetuous nation that marches across the earth's open spaces to seize territories not its own. They are fierce and terrifying. Their views of justice and sovereignty stem from themselves. Their horses are swifter than leopards and more fierce than wolves of the night. Their horsemen charge ahead. Their horsemen come from distant lands. They fly like eagles, swooping to devour. All of them come to do violence. Their faces are set in determination. They gather prisoners like sand. They mock kings, and rulers are a joke to them. They laugh at every fortress and build siege ramps to capture it. Then they sweep by like the wind and pass through. They are guilty. Their strength is their God. That's his answer. Verse 12, this is Habakkuk's second prayer. 
Are you not from eternity, Lord my God? My Holy One, you will not die. Lord, you appointed them to execute judgment. My rock, you destined them to punish us. Your eyes are too pure to look on evil, and you cannot tolerate wrongdoing. So why do you tolerate those who are treacherous? Why are you silent while one who is wicked swallows up one who is more righteous than himself? You have made mankind like the fish of the sea, like marine creatures that have no ruler. The Chaldeans pull them all up with a hook, catch them in their dragnet, and gather them in their fishing net. That is why they are glad and rejoice. That is why they sacrifice to their dragnet and burn incense to their fishing net. For by these things their portion is rich and their food plentiful. Will they therefore empty their net and continually slaughter nations without mercy? Mm. It's chapter 1. Chapter 1. Here we go to chapter 2. This is still Habakkuk talking. He says, I will stand at my guard post and station myself on the lookout tower. I will watch to see what he will say to me and what I should reply about my complaint. Verse 2, this is God's second answer. The Lord answered me, write down this vision, clearly inscribe it on tablets so one may easily read it. For the vision is yet for the appointed time. It testifies about the end and will not lie. Though it delays, wait for it. Since it will certainly come and not be late. Look, his ego is inflated. He is without integrity. But the righteous one will live by his faith. Moreover, wine betrays. An arrogant man is never at rest. He enlarges his appetite like Sheol, and like death he is never satisfied. He gathers all the nations to himself. He collects all the peoples for himself. Won't all of these take up a taunt against him with mockery and riddles about him? They will say, woe to him who amasses what is not his, how much longer, and loads himself with goods taken in pledge. Won't your creditors suddenly arise and those who disturb, your, disturb you wake up? Then you will become spoiled for them. Since you have plundered many nations, all the peoples who remain will plunder you because of human bloodshed and violence against lands, cities, and all who live in them. Woe to him who dishonestly makes wealth for his house to place his nest on high to escape the grasp of disaster. You have planned shame for your house by wiping out many peoples and sinning against your own self. For the stones will cry out from the wall and the rafters will answer them from the woodwork. Woe to him who builds a city with bloodshed and founds a town with injustice. Is it not from the Lord of armies that the peoples labor only to fuel the fire and countries exhaust themselves for nothing? For the Lord will be filled, I mean, sorry, for the earth will be filled with the knowledge of the Lord's glory as the water covers the earth, the sea. Woe to him who gives his neighbor's drink pouring out your wrath and even making them drunk in order to look at their nakedness. You will be filled with disgrace instead of glory. You also drink and expose your uncircumcision. The cup in the Lord's right hand will come around to you and utter disgrace will cover your glory. For your violence against Lebanon will overwhelm you. The destruction of animals will terrify you because of your human bloodshed and violence against lands, cities, and all who live in them. What use is a carved idol after its craftsman carves it? It is only a cast image, a teacher of lies. For the one who crafts its shape trusts in it and makes idols that cannot speak. Woe to him who says to wood, wake up, 
or to mute stone, come alive. Can it teach? Look, it may be plated with gold and silver, yet there is no breath in it at all. But the Lord in his holy temple, let the whole earth be silent in his presence. That's chapter two. Chapter three, last chapter here. This is Habakkuk's third prayer. A prayer of the prophet Habakkuk according to Shiganoth. I don't know. I'm probably not saying that right. Lord, I have heard the report about you. Lord, I stand in awe of your deeds. Revive your work in these years. Make it known in these years. In your wrath, remember mercy. God comes from Teman, the Holy One, from Mount Par uh, Paran, Paran, Selah. His splendor covers the heavens, and the earth is full of his praise. His brilliance is like light. Rays are flashing from his hand. This is where his power is hidden. Plague goes before him, and pestilence follows in his steps. He stands and shakes the earth. He looks and startles the nations. The age-old mountains break apart. The ancient hills sink down. His pathways are ancient. I see the tents of Cushan in distress. The tent curtains of the land of Midian tremble. Are you angry at the rivers, Lord? Is your wrath against the rivers? Or is your rage against the sea when you ride on your horses, your victorious chariot? You took the sheath from your bow. The arrows are ready to be used with an oath. Selah. You split the earth with rivers. The mountains see you and shudder. A downpour of water sweeps by. The deep roars with its voice and lifts its waves high. Sun and moon stand still in their lofty residence. At the flash of your flying arrows. At the brightness of your shining spear. You march across the earth with an indignation. You trample down the nations in wrath. You come out to save your people, to save your anointed. You crush the leader of the house of the wicked and strip him from foot to neck. You pierce his head with his own spears. His warriors storm out to scatter us, gloating as if ready to secretly devour the weak. You tread the sea with your horses, stirring up the vast water. I'm at verse 16 of chapter 3 now. I heard and I trembled within. My lips quivered at the sound. Rottenness entered my bones. I trembled where I stood. Now I must quietly wait for the day of distress to come against the people invading us. Though the fig tree does not bud and there is no fruit on the vines, Though the olive crop fails and the fields produce no, no food, though the flocks disappear from the pen and there are no herds in the stalls, yet I will celebrate in the Lord. I will rejoice in the God of my salvation. The Lord, my Lord, is my strength. He makes my feet like those of a deer and enables me to walk on mountain heights. For the choir director on stringed instruments. The end. That is it. That is all of Habakkuk. That's the three chapters. What I want you to think about with this is um, after reading the entire book of Habakkuk that we just did, what key words and themes stand out to you? What stands out to you about that reading, about those three chapters of Habakkuk? And I'll tell you what I wrote down, some of the things that I found in study. Chapter one, and I'll just show you. Look, I highlight and I underline and I write and I do all kinds of things. And the first thing I did for chapter one is I wrote watch and see. Watch and see. That's just something that stuck out to me. Watch and see. Chapter two, I wrote at the top here, stand and see. God was saying, watch, watch what I'm about to do. <laughs> watch and see. Stand and see, right? He's at his post. And then the third chapter I wrote right here, kneel and see. Kneel and see, right? And um, 
things that stuck out to me, guys. I, I highlight things, I underline things, um, especially like in chapter two, all the woes. The five, there's five woes, um, woe oracles. And so I kind of highlighted those woes. Um, we're gonna, again, we're gonna dive into this. I'm gonna be uh, talking about this. We're gonna be going over this in EMJ Daily in the mornings, and I post on both of my social networks and on YouTube. So even if you want to catch up or you can't join me live, that's okay. Just catch up with me later. Check it, check it later. Um, but we are going to dive into these three chapters um, and really just kind of dissect it. What verse stands out to you the most was the second question. The third, what did you observe about the character of God in the book of Habakkuk? And then number four, write out a prayer asking God to show you more of who he is through your study of Habakkuk. Write a prayer. Ask God, show me. Open this up to me. Let your word come alive. The word is alive and powerful. And we can, we can ask. <laughs> we can ask God to help us to open this up. Um, you're asking me, Candy, what do I see in the third? Okay, so, yep, the first one, the chapter one was watch and see. Chapter two was stand and see. And the third one, third chapter is kneel and see. Kneel and see. Yep. Um, so yeah, we're going to be talking about some, um, Another little note I can give y'all too as we go into each of these chapters that I wrote down as just like a cross reference um, for chapter one of Habakkuk. If anybody wants to type this in the in the comments if you want to. Um, chapter one of Habakkuk, verse five. Chapter one, verse five. Um, the cross, cross reference for that, look up Acts chapter 13, verses 40 and 41. Acts chapter 13, verses 40 and 41 goes with Habakkuk chapter 1 and verse 5. That's one thing. And then the other one is Habakkuk chapter 3, verse 17 um, goes with Philippians chapter 4, verse 4. And verses 10 through 19. So, just something for you to dig a little deeper into tonight, tomorrow. Because um, we're not, you know, it's going to be a little bit before we make it to the last chapter. Because we're going to be really just going through this. So, join me. Try to uh, follow, in, you know, follow along. And, um, and let's really just dig in. Dig into Habakkuk, okay? I want us to do this. I want us to really... Uh, dig into this. We're going to talk about a little bit more of the, um, more of the intro tomorrow. No, I'm sorry. We did that right there. Well, yes, for tomorrow, there's a little bit, there's a little bit more. Um, can we trust God? Is he really good? These are, these are the things. Candy, you're asking about the, um, Acts, Acts chapter 13. Acts chapter 13, verses 40 and 41. I'll probably put it in here so y'all know that. I'll, t I'll show y'all which ones go together for those two different things because I know that's a lot to try to remember and type in. Acts 13, 40, and 41. Um, but the message of Habakkuk, um, we was going to talk about that in the morning, um, but I might do a little bit of that now so we can just dive into chapter 1 tomorrow. Um but it says, can we trust God? Is he really good? Is he really good? These questions provide the foundation of the book of Habakkuk. But more than that, these questions are echoing through every book of the Bible. These are the questions that Satan planted in the heart of Eve from the earliest moments of Genesis chapter 3. Satan tempted her by asking her if what God said was true. He twisted God's word and sought to make Eve question the words of her good and gracious creator. Since then, humanity has been asking this same question, even when they don't verbalize it. Is God good? 
we say that. Is God good? Is his way best for us? Can we trust him? Or should we try to live in our own strength? Is he holding out on us? Why is this world full of suffering and sorrow? Right? We have these questions. Why? Why is there so much suffering? Why, if he's such a good God, why is this happening? Maybe you've asked these questions or maybe you've been afraid to ask these questions. In the book of Habakkuk, we see the prayers and laments of Habakkuk as he speaks to God and takes his questions to the Lord. We also see in Habakkuk the way that the Lord answers Habakkuk's questions. The answer to Habakkuk's questions can help us see God's character and understand the answers to these questions we have as well. The structure of the book is two sets of questions from Habakkuk followed by answers from the Lord. That The book then ends with a psalm of Habakkuk's that encourage our, encourages our hearts to trust the Lord even when we don't understand his ways. Even when we don't understand his ways, to trust in him. Most of the prophets called the people of God to covenant obedience, but Habakkuk is very different. At first, it seems that Habakkuk is calling God to covenant obedience. But ultimately, we see that Habakkuk's prayers serve to teach Habakkuk and us as well. We learn that God's ways are not always our ways, but he is faithful to his covenant. He is faithful to his covenant. So though at first glance, we may think that God is not acting in accordance with his covenant or his character, in the end, we will learn that he is. He is. The questions of Habakkuk remind us of another man that faced great difficulty and questioned the goodness and sovereignty of God. The style of Habakkuk's lament is very similar to that of Job. And in the end, the result is the same. Habakkuk, like Job, will learn to worshipfully submit to the Lord. Habakkuk reminds us that God is good and gracious while also being holy and just. We serve a holy and just God, y'all. We can't forget that. He is holy and he is just. Habakkuk points us to the cross because it is there that God's goodness and grace and his holiness and justice are perfectly displayed. It is there that Jesus bore the sins of his people and died under the justice and wrath of God in our place. And it is there that God's grace and goodness were poured out for us. This is the hope that we cling to as we read the book of Habakkuk. Our gracious and loving God will never desert his covenant and he will never forsake his people. He will never forsake us, guys. He will never forsake his people. I don't care what it looks like. And that's what Habakkuk is learning. I don't care what it looks like. He's, he's holy and he is just, but he is never going to desert his people. He loves us. <laughs> we have hope. We have hope. Our lives are filled with sorrow and suffering, but the book of Habakkuk teaches us that God uses all things, including our sorrow and suffering, to bring glory to his name and to sanctify his people. Through it all, we choose to worship when we don't understand and cling to our sovereign and gracious God. Amen, guys. Amen. You need to write a summary of Habakkuk. Read it. Write down your thoughts. Underline those scriptures, the verses, the words that jump out at you. Guys, get on the Daily Grace Company. Grab you some of these awesome highlighters. I have so many, y'all. I have them all in my, in my EMJ Daily cup here with my pen. But I have, I love their highlighters. Anyways. Grab something. Don't be afraid to, to write in your Bible or get a notepad. Do something, but you've got to write it out, okay? Um, what ways are we prone to question God's goodness as we look at the world around us? How can we cling to the truths of his word even when we don't understand? And why do you think we need the message of Habakkuk today? Think about it. Think about it.
All right, that's it for tonight. I kept on here long enough. Been on here for almost 30 minutes now. Thank you for hanging in here with me. Y'all have a wonderful night. I will be right back on here in the morning at 6.30 a.m. One eye open. I'm just kidding. 6.30 a.m., guys. I will be here, and we are going to dive into Habakkuk chapter 1, verses 1 through 4. So read it, soak it in, have it down inside of you, and say, okay, let's dig. Let's dig in the Word. Let's grow Man, that's what we need right now. We need Jesus more than anything right now. We need his word more than anything. So let's do this together, guys. Y'all have a wonderful night, and I will see y'all in the morning on the EMJ Daily.